Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, another live with me, Stephen, and Mr. Shanab, our wonderful CEO and founder of Figurama Collectors, to talk about our latest release, uh, Claire versus Ophelia, so another Claymore statue. Hi, Shanab, and welcome. Hello. Uh, welcome. Hi, awesome, uh, Stephen. How are you? I'm, I'm good, All thank you. good. Yeah, actually getting over, over an illness, um, but still here, still managing to come through yeah. for the Figuramians. Your voice is ready to go for a concert, so don't worry. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me here again. And uh, I am very excited today to speak more to our fans and uh, claim more uh, collectors regarding our amazing piece. Oh, and, and the second piece, actually, from the yeah. line, which is uh, Ophelia versus uh, Claire. Yeah, which it's an amazing thing. Like <clears throat> I think um, you'll probably agree with me that Claymore, the Teresa versus Priscilla statue, is one of the ones that everyone went wild for. And it's one of the ones that Figurama, people really know Figurama from that statue as well. So having the second piece in that line is, is like really exciting for us and hopefully really exciting for all of the collectors out there as well. Absolutely. I totally agree. Like, uh... Uh, Teresa versus uh, Priscilla was a huge success for us with a quick sellout time that we had also. I believe that we had 800 pieces. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was in like one hour and 40 minutes. It, it was a great sellout. Yeah. And uh, as we all saw the results, once we received it and we have displayed it on our shelves, it's a masterpiece. And expect no less uh, from uh, Claire versus Ophelia. Um, yeah. Claymore is an amazing uh, IP with a very niche following, and uh, it have an amazing uh, loyal followers and fans like ourselves as well. And uh, we wanted to do its justice. So yeah. um, the first piece, which is Teresa versus Priscilla, it was. A uh, great piece, and it raised the bar, so it made it so difficult for us to make a second piece that will equal or exceed the uh, quality and uh, creativity of of uh, the first piece. Exactly. However, yeah. we are more than proud and happy with uh, our second piece, which is uh, Claire versus Ophelia. Yeah. And I think um, from the, the reception that the collectors have given us for this piece, I think everyone's very happy with it as well. Um, it's, it's been uh, it's breaking, yeah, breaking some of our, our kind of community records in terms of engagement with, um, with the pieces and, and sharing them around. It's, it's one that people love, definitely. Um, and we're very excited Absolutely, to bring this. absolutely. Yeah, and I can't wait to talk more about the uh, the art, the design, and uh, what we are planning to do with this piece. Yeah. So shall we shall we jump into actually looking into the piece as well? And let's do it. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, so here's here's the front view um, of this amazing piece. Um, it's everything you want from this fight. So in this fight. It's the newly awakened Ophelia. So she's like this snake mermaid kind of fish uh, monster that she's been turned into. And Claire um, facing off against her as well. So it's a really exciting fight. And I think it's something that's been, it kind of been projected from the very start of the season. I know Ophelia was, obviously she was a, a Claymore previously, but she always was a bit antagonistic. Um, and always seemed like she was going to be a villain at some point. So it's amazing to see that that fight finally come to fruition. And the design, amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a very iconic moment, and it has been requested uh, from our fans, you know, repeatedly on, in Figurama Collectors Hub or by other social media. And uh, as always, our fans have the right taste. They know exactly what they want, and they mm. pick the great epic uh, scenes that, you know, uh, it's very relevant to, like, what we should do. Um, what we, like, what made us really getting excited into jumping into this project 
if you if you remember Stephen in the first piece, which is Teresa versus uh, Priscilla, uh, uh, Priscilla, sorry, um, it was an earthy piece. It mm-hmm. was the stones, like yeah. that kind of uh, coral uh, like uh, stones that is out of of uh, of the of of this world. You know, it's like yeah. very spacey and earthy tones. In this one, we are dealing with another element, which is the water element. So the first one was the earth, and this is the water element. So as a water element here, we have worked very hard to achieve the dynamism of the water flow to depict this uh, brutal fight that they had. And in the same time, we wanted to focus on the diorama to be complementary to this piece. And part of it is like not just you know, and I don't know, to, to be integrated with the scene itself. So you can see the uh, splashes going around each thread. It's like made carefully to make sure to um, uh, ensure the balance visually and in like terms of production as well. So you see the water flow is like very dynamic. Every point is like going toward a different direction that it makes sense and it's artistically pleasing. Yeah, mm, yeah, um, and the overall colors that the, it's a bit uh, swampy. We love swamps. Mm-hmm. We have used it in uh, uh, Vampire Hunter. Vampire oh. Hunter D. Yeah. yeah, that was a great use of it. And here again, we come with another powerful uh, swamp, as we are going to talk later on. That is integrated with uh, the drama and the pedestal itself. Yeah, exactly, and. I think, yeah, that's a really interesting point to actually bring up about the difference in colouring between uh, Teresa versus Priscilla and Claire versus Ophelia. I feel this is like a lot a brighter um, and I think it's really going to pop on our collected shelves. Like you're really going to be able to to see this, um, which is really exciting because of those scales on Ophelia as well. Um, it's It's amazing, definitely. Absolutely. So, if we uh, go to the the side and the back now, actually. Let's go to the side and the back, because we've seen the main front. So, there is always a lot going on in our statues, and what you might notice from this, this back view in particular is that we still have got all of the detail, like, in Ophelia's back, um, and you can see, like, the iridescence of the scales is really coming through on here which exactly i think was uh, it's something that was is definitely difficult to to get right is the iridescent paint um and i think it's really popping off here exactly um you know it's uh it's a detail that we always love to add and it's a very special effect that we um, uh, uh, pride ourselves uh, that uh, achieving it always in a great way the first use was in uh, Amon's ears in the, in our first piece, uh, Devilman versus Amon. So we had his ears uh, or ear wings, you know, uh, it was integrated in there. Uh, in the first piece of uh, Claymore, it was very evident on uh, Priscilla's uh, skin mm. that uh, wherever you move the piece, you will see a difference in the coloration it's uh, due to the iridescent effect here we have a great reason to use our uh, skills and uh, flex our muscles again yeah. um, it's it's very legit uh, as we see in nature in in uh, snakes that they have this iridescent effect it it was very challenging for us to achieve it but definitely i am very proud of the results so the scales are going to change color as you uh, turn the piece and as you look at it from different angles and it's a huge body so it's very dominant since i would say we can say that uh, ophelia's body it's it's part of the diorama it's not just the character so that's why we want to make sure it's something very special actually yeah, because I think that's one of the challenges we had actually was how, I don't know if uh, because she's kind of this snake monster, whether you would say tall or how long she is, um, but she's so long that actually getting her to go 
within the scale was actually quite a big challenge, which is why she is involved a lot more in the diorama. You can see her like coiling up around Claire as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, which was and that gave her the presence, the the yeah. uh, powerful presence in 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 the scene. Yeah, exactly. You can see her, and I'll just go back to the the front image again. You can see her kind of towering over Claire, and how much bigger she is. To just show that this is some you know something that you don't really want to fight. Like this is a really hard fight for Claire, um, and I think we've we've done that well, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Also on the base, as we go round, you'll notice that there are some Claymore swords in there. And this is something that we we took from the previous um, Teresa versus Priscilla piece as well. We had obviously different Claymore swords in there as well. And so we've brought that over this time to this one. So we have uh, Ophelia's sword, we have Claire's sword, and we have Irene's sword. So obviously the three main yes. characters from this, which is... Definitely. It's very important for us to keep the unity mm. between the collection, between the same collection. And you can see uh, there are uh, three major, or actually four major yeah. elements that keep the unity between uh, Teresa versus uh, Priscilla and uh, Claire versus Ophelia. The first one is the horizontal towering uh, statue. It's... Yeah. Uh, like sorry the vertical uh, towering uh, statue it's a vertical piece so once you put them to uh, like next to each other you will see that they belong to the same family the second point is as what you just, like, just mentioned the 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 claymores that's uh, the claymore swords this is a uh, um a unique piece actually that is a, a, a making the, uh, this unity the second point is the posture of both it's it's on the opposite side so it's like a mirroring uh, posture so like once you put both the statues together as 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 we can see in the screen uh, you will see like they are forming this kind of unity as yeah. as two masterpieces next to each other um another thing is definitely as as what i mentioned in the beginning it's the elemental uh uh, 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 the elements of uh, water and the stone that's another continuity of the elements in a way yeah it's it's really interesting and this is like why we love doing these videos because it's there is so much depth and thought that's gone into all of these designs that when you just look at it by itself you wouldn't really you wouldn't really think about it but when you know when we start talking about it we start to uncover all of these details um these design details and these choices that we make to make these incredible pieces absolutely so let's and go. uh yeah um yeah please carry on yeah i was gonna say let's um let's zoom into to claire next so obviously claire is uh our heroine in this statue um, she's come back, she's done some training, she now has Irene's right arm on her as well, so she's stronger, she's learnt a lot more, she's upgraded, and I think she's still not quite ready for this fight, but she, she manages to make it through, I think she becomes partially awakened to actually be able to beat Ophelia, um, but this is, this is one of the cool things for me. Um, I think Claire looks amazing in the statue as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, um, I love her posture, like how daring she is. So the posing, um, you know, like you can tell she is ready to, to go for uh, this unfair fight, I would say, or... Mm an unequal fight it's yeah. it's it's like not equal in like terms of power but she is really daring and she's going with like her full power um just to mention here regarding the um, the face and the hair uh, we definitely heard our fans and i believe that we will uh, come 
uh, uh, like later on uh, to to speak about like more in, in in like depth, but we find that there is a room of enhancement and we have uh, uh, addressed that as like how we are going to show our fans it could be better and we have worked on it and we uh, we will always keep working till it will reach the perfection and that's what we do with the, all our pieces yeah exactly so um yeah we'll be showing a a different version of of claire's face just as kind of a render um so that the collectors can see we're working on on upgrading it and getting it closer to the the claire busts that we've done because I think everyone was like very happy with that, um, yeah, with that head sculpt. Definitely. Um, so I think it's something we're definitely working on it, um, and I think you know you're you're all going to be happy with the results, and we won't be making it unless you are happy. So be uh, be ready for that. Absolutely. Okay. Have faith in Figurama team. Yeah, have have faith in the team. We'll we'll make it. We'll make it amazing. Um, okay, let's go to Ophelia's close-up as well. So, Ophelia, as we mm. mentioned before, Look at her. amazing, still yeah. like beautiful, but then yes, like menacing. You know, like there is lots of uh, grace in this uh, statue, yeah. even though, like, I mean, uh, whether it's in Claire or Ophelia, you you can uh, still see the grace in them. Especially Ophelia, she's a, a graceful monster, I would say. So yeah. she is pretty, in my opinion, and uh, her scales, you 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 can sense the slimy look. Yeah. Because of the painting, you know, like she's coming out of water, you know, she's wet. And um, the sculpt was amazingly done. I have to give the credit here to Miguel, who have worked on, yeah. on, on this piece. Yeah, it's it's an incredible sculpt here. Um, I think he's captured the 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 feel and the vibe of Ophelia really well as well. Like she looks like she's in charge of this fight. Like she's not even trying. She's kind of toying with Claire at this point. Um, yeah, which is it's it perfectly comes through in this head sculpt for sure. Okay, so go yeah. back to Claire. So, speaking of Ophelia and Claire as well, um, one of the Easter eggs we have is the the wound or the scar that Claire gets from this fight. So, early on, like very early on in the fight, Ophelia takes a bite out of Claire. Um, she hasn't hasn't quite realised that she is awakened yet um, and is this monster. So she just has this urge to to take a bite, and I think we've we've done a very good uh, reconstruction of that wound here. Absolutely. It's, it's nice to have this imperfection in the, in the body mm. that it is telling a story and it's like part of the story. In the same time, it's not affecting the aesthetic of, of, of the statue. Yeah. It's one of the great details that we always love to keep in, in our uh, artwork. Yeah, exactly. And it's it adds that extra element of like gore and story and blood um, without going too over the top. We it. just want to find the chance to add gore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We always just want to add gore. It, any possible An excuse. <laughs> yeah. OK, so the next thing um, is a is a nice little little addition that we've added for this one is and we added this in Cyrene. Devilman Cyrene as well. We're adding yes. removable breast covers. Um, yeah. Who doesn't like that, Stephen? Exactly. I mean, uh, based based on the fans' uh, feedback on uh, Priscilla, we had many requests and complaints. I would say, like, why yeah. it wasn't removable and why it's not revealing. And we found that there is uh, definitely. Uh, an opinion there that should be respected. That's why we give an option. You can safely display here in your house uh, with a breast cover. And if you uh, would like to remove it, you remove it and you'll have the full reveal effect. So it's, we left it up to the uh, preference of our collectors. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that just helps our, 
our collectors to show the statue in the way that they want to um, and gives them a few a few extra options. It's also great for marketing because uh, we wouldn't be allowed to show the statue on Facebook if we didn't have these. So, yes, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's always a bonus for us. It is a well. limitation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, amazing. So it's a win win. It's a win win, exactly. Uh, the collectors get something. We're allowed to actually show it to people. It, it works for everyone. So if we go into the, uh, into the base as well. So as we mentioned, we've, we've, it's always sweat in, set in the swamp. Um, and so we've, we've created this visible window into the swamp because we thought that rather than just making it like murky and not having anything in there, we wanted to add some interest and some Easter eggs to it. So we've got... A few really cool things in there. Um, obviously, you can see there are the skulls and the fish from the um, just that exist in the swamp as well. But we also have this twin goddess statue, which is a throwback to the Teresa versus Priscilla um, piece as well, because I think it's it's in there as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's right, and that's part of the unity that we. Uh, but in this time, we get it as an Easter egg that it's hidden in a way. Um, in the previous piece, it was part of the pedestal. Yeah. So definitely, it's an amazing Easter egg uh, that uh, also keep uh, part of the unity with the first piece. I love this uh, area, like that particular area. It's inside the water. So it's yeah. inside the translucent uh, resin. Um, and as we, uh, how we'll see later on, it's lead. You know, uh, there is an LED light that it's lit and it will give you like that nice uh, greenish uh, swampy effect. So even uh, during the day or the night, you can open the LED to give you more visibility over what's going on inside the swamp. So maybe we like go back to the image of the swamp. So in, um, inside the water, you will be able to see the fish and some other element. It's exactly as if it's in the swamp. There is a skull, you know, death horror. So uh, even the fish that we have chosen, it's a bit uh, scary one. So and you will see the slime the algae uh, here and there so yeah we wanted to we love to see the details beneath the transparent resin yeah. it's always uh, works on your curiosity and uh, excitement every time you review the piece you are gonna find something new yeah and that's all our figurama pieces so in here definitely it's one of the great elements and you can see the trees that is holding the base you know like um i i call them the death trees because you know they are not pleasant in a way you know mm -hmm. so all of that uh it's it's part of the details that we always keep in mind uh, whenever we create our uh, masterpieces yeah exactly it's it's all of these small details that really make the piece this like a singular design rather than like weird little elements put together everything comes yeah. together nicely um which is absolutely it, it's in a harmony in harmony yeah. exactly um yeah so this is this is a really exciting bit for me having that base with the led the water effects that you can see into the swamp i think it's one of the first times we've done something like that um, and I've not really seen it anywhere else. It's yeah. it's definitely like a new way of thinking about how you use translucent resin and how you can use the, yeah. the space. Yeah, it has been done in a way that it's exposed, you know, yeah. like not within the resin, like let's say, but within the resin is definitely a completely different effect that we really love. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. So it's part of our amazing Easter egg for this statue. Yeah. So that's uh -huh. um, that's that's our our review of this statue. Um, so that's all the images images we've got right now. Um, we do have some other images that we'll be showing during the pre-order, which are really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like uh, a very nice a very nice gallery for sure. Um, but you'll have to wait for those. Absolutely. Um, so in terms of 
like challenges because I think talking about the challenges of working on this is always very interesting for our collectors to find out about. So we briefly touched on it when we, we started talking around how did we choose which which Claymore to go for next? Like how did we choose to do uh, Claire, versus, uh, Claire versus Ophelia? Yeah, definitely, Stephen. It's uh, it's like about the popularity of, of the character and the fight scene. And it has been long awaited and requested by our fans. So mm. we had to answer the call and to take action into uh, giving them uh, what they are asking for and it makes sense the big time it's one of the greatest fight in claymore yeah so definitely like that was one of our uh, biggest pieces yeah about the sure. challenge i i i wouldn't hide this and um, i'm sure that you know it uh, ophelia was a great challenge for us mm. to uh, give her that monster look yet graceful and sexy and the proportions yeah. to to be very uh, smooth and the the thousands of uh, scales that she have you know it need to be hand uh, i mean uh, digitally sculpted each piece by piece you know uh because um, we need perfection there and you saw in uh, in uh, ophelia's uh, sculpt there's lots of details there's lots of uh, tear uh, skin uh, like muscle tissues and all yeah. of that that was a big challenge to achieve all of these little details <clears throat> the more you look at it the more you will realize that uh, the like more details it have and the more texture the more realism all of these are big challenges so it really took us a long while to achieve to achieve the results that we I, uh, can see right now yeah Exactly. And I salute the team, Daniel Kamardin and uh, Miguel, definitely for uh, doing such a great work in here. Yeah, they've done an incredible job here. And like, even down to the the bits that I've seen, because obviously I'm not in there for the entire design process, but like like you are, but having seen there's even very minor details, like how her fingers are positioned, which we've kind of changed bits here and there and been like oh maybe the uh the claw is slightly too long or slightly too short to really make this perfect and it's these kind of details that i think are really set us apart absolutely the position like that the tension yeah. in the claws you know like uh, it like cannot be relaxed mm -hmm. there must be tension and that tension you can see there from the joints from the stretch of the skin all of these details that we always pay attention to make sure it's very evident and that's uh, you know uh, to point out these details by itself you won't feel it but when you look at the overall piece and you say it's perfect it's uh, thanks to these little details that they sum up this whole creation yeah exactly um it's it's a beautiful piece it's definitely had its challenges but i think we've we've really overcome those and that's like you said that's why it's taken quite a while for us to do this second second piece of claymore um so yeah absolutely it's, it's worth it and it's worth the wait exactly it's been worth the wait um so we've also with this piece we've done something new normally we all we kind of announce our edition size straight away but for this piece we haven't done it um, we've announced a range. So our range is... Yes, that's right. Yeah, 500 for minimum yeah. and 800 for maximum. Um, and there are a couple of reasons to that. And I don't know if, Shinab, do you want to talk through those or do you want me to, to go into those? Please be my guest. Yeah, awesome. So one of the things we always think about is our after sales, the after sales market, basically. So we want to keep the... The addition size low so that it is a rare piece and it is a piece that not everyone can have in their collection at the same yep. time we do appreciate that there are a lot of claymore fans out there we've had obviously we sold teresa versus priscilla we sold 800 of those in an hour and 40 minutes we've also sold um a good amount of claire claire um claire and teresa busts 
as well? The bust, yes, that's uh, uh, it's another thing to speak about. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a lot of Claymore Figuramians who are diehard fans of the series. So we didn't yeah. want to limit it too much so that people wouldn't, the people who are really big fans of Claymore wouldn't have the chance to get their piece. But at the same time, yeah. we do want to keep it rare. So this is why we've created this range where we are, we're going to do a minimum of 500 and we're going to do a maximum of 800. So we're going to give you, exactly. yeah, exactly. So the, the pre-order is essentially going to do as well as the, uh, the collectors want it to do. So if you're all hungry for it, there's going to be 800. If some of you can't quite get it, then that's fine. Um, and we'll we'll create less and it'll be a rarer piece. But this will exactly. be... Exactly. And... Mm. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say, this will be the only chance to get it. So once we close exactly. the pre-order, that will be it. And we also, what happened with uh, with uh, Teresa versus uh, Priscilla, the 800 pieces was sold for 1,275, if uh, I'm not mistaken. Yes. 1,275. And that yeah. was sold... 25 yeah. yeah so that was uh, and it's sold out in like one hour and uh, 40 minutes yeah immediately after that now uh, you can't find it cheaper than 2000 and i have seen uh, 3000 and more dollars and that's due to the value of this uh, art piece you know and we 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 like want to keep it for the niche collector um and we definitely we are very confident and we are sure that the same can happen with uh, Claire versus Ophelia. Once it's sold out, they don't expect the pre-order prices anymore. And um, while you are enjoying your masterpiece at home, you also have a value, an investment with you. And that's Figurama Collectors in, in a nutshell. Yeah, it, it really is. And I think for... Teresa versus Priscilla, we even have, I think mm. at last count, it was around four or 5,000 people on the wait list. Um, on the wait list, yes, yes, yeah. definitely. So people want these pieces. Um, they're definitely, there's definitely a hunger for it. So now is, yeah. now is the time to, to get the Claire versus Ophelia. Exactly. Otherwise, you're going well, to be the on the price are list. affordable and we have lots of, uh, deals that go with it for the previous owners of yes. uh, maybe Stephen, you can talk to us uh, more about it. Yeah, exactly. So as um, as a uh, a benefit for previous owners. So this is whether you own the Teresa versus Priscilla statue or if you own one of the bus, it, it doesn't matter. Like you've kind of invested in Figurama and the Claymore series. If you... Um, all you need to do is take a photo of your piece with the, your name and date, email address, and we've got a Google form that will be in the caption. And that will give you $55 off the shipping for this piece, which also does stack. So as always, we have our Amazon payment services, $45 off shipping. Yeah, that's 45 yeah. Yeah, so you can actually get $100 off shipping if you do both of those things. So if you own Claymore and you pay through, through Amazon Web Services, you can get $100 off shipping, which is pretty amazing. Absolutely. I totally agree. And that's something that we wanted to give back to our loyal collectors of this line. And definitely it's a great chance for everyone to complete their line. Whether you had uh, Teresa versus Priscilla's uh, statue or even the um, elite yeah. busts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Whatever you own, it, it works for us because you've, you've invested in us and you've invested in our Claymore. We also do have some other discounts as well. So if you pay in full in the first 48 hours of the pre-order, then you will get $70 off. If you use the code CVO48, so basically Claire versus Ophelia48, CVO. Um, and is it a stackable? So that will stack with any of the shipping discounts. Um, 
it's not you're not able to use that with your geld points or any other money off yeah. discounts. But that is um, quite a nice a nice discount to get off if you're order if you're paying in full. Um, Definitely, which is amazing. And then we also have one through the entire pre-order. There's no necessary limits to it. You can pay with our 12-month plan or our nine-month plan. It's up to you. If you use CVO35, you get $35 off. So that's just, you know, if you if you can't afford to pay in full straight away, you can still get a discount through uh, by ordering with us as well. Which is one of the many reasons why you should order directly from us. Um, the other reason Absolutely. would be... Yeah, the other reason is we've got uh, our digital desktop and mobile wallpapers. So they're animated wallpapers that you get only if you order with Figurama. Um, if you order with a distributor, you won't be able to get those, unfortunately. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, so the pre-order is happening on the 26th of October. So uh, by the time you're watching this, it'll be tomorrow. And there is going to be a maximum... 11 p.m. Japan time. Yeah, 11 p.m. Japan time, JST. <laughs> we did have a post earlier this week, which has the map on it. I'll actually put it up on screen as well, which has the map with different time zones in it. So you don't have to worry too much about converting to from Japan time to your time zone um, to, make, to make that a lot easier for you. And yeah, there's going to be a maximum of 800 pieces. Um, and based on the last Claire, Claymore pre-order, it was one hour and 40 minutes when 800 pieces went. So I think you're going to need to be quick. Uh, I think Absolutely. It's, it's be uh, you better be uh, quick, ready, and uh, to really get a chance to own this masterpiece while it's available. Yeah, because um, we're not we're not going to be having it again. So this is this is it. Definitely. Basically. Um, so before we finish up, we've got a couple of couple of questions around um, around Claymore, around other parts of Figure Armor as well. So let's go through some of those. So the big one, the big one really is around Diocube. We've had a couple of people mentioning recently around um, Diocube and when it's going to be released. Um, I think everyone's very eager to get their Diocube. And we, we get it. It's, it's an amazing piece. Um, like, we really love it. And we are working on it. Um, Shnab, I don't know if you want to go into any Definitely. of the details. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, as, as what we mentioned last time, it's a challenging piece for, uh, for us. Even though it's a die cube, it's 15 by 15 by 15 centimeters. We have done much more huge complex pieces in resin. However, PVC, it's a different case. Yeah. And we weren't happy with the first patch that was produced and we made sure to uh, go back to our drawing board and redo it in the right way so be patient uh, trust in us that will give out an amazing masterpiece very soon yeah yeah i think i echo that as well like we've we've made quite a lot of changes um to the piece not not anything that you'd necessarily notice visually, but it's just a lot of small things that obviously means we need to remake the entire moulds from scratch um, just to make it to the quality that we want from our large statues as well. Um, yeah. And I think we've, we've learned a lot of things. This is our first real PVC line. So we've learned a lot of the, the challenges that come with doing PVC as well. Um, but we're working yeah. to get it out there. It will be coming. It's just slightly delayed. And once we have a a closer idea of when it's going to be finalized and when we're happy with it, we will be letting everyone know that it's going to be coming. So the next question is around Vampire Hunter D, which is actually going to be shipping in December. So um, it's around the corner. It's around yeah. the corner. Um, but people are asking again, kind of what what caused that to be delayed in in general yeah yeah it's uh, one of our most uh, complex uh, pieces uh, when it comes to resin and i i would say it's uh, quite similar to the complexity of alucard of helsing yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a huge horse we have the cape we have the sword we have 
the goals, the transparent resin in the base. Um, it's very complex piece that comes with many swap outs, you know. Mm. Um, and what's special about this one and makes it more complex is that we need to go back to Amano San, the author of the novel and the painter with every stage, you know, so that yeah. there are some fine tunes here and there, you know, like just little tweaks. He's super excited, happy and satisfied with it. Yeah. And we just make sure that we nudge whenever it's needed to make sure it's it's perfection. But it's yeah. coming up very soon. Yeah, exactly. And I think you and Ahmad, our uh, operations mm. manager, went out to China recently this year and really kind of worked a lot of details out with that piece as well while you were over there. So that's correct it's it's coming um it's gonna yeah, be and we are very excited to it yeah yeah we're, we're super excited to to show more around that definitely and i think in the next couple of weeks we'll definitely be showing some more behind the scenes of that as it's being produced so uh expect expect those to be be coming um so the next one is when are the next claymore busts going to be released the question is which one we mm. would love to hear our fans opinion you know uh, yeah. <clears throat> for now we have been doing only uh, claymores <clears throat> sorry so yeah. i would like to know whether our fans would like us to do the beasts as well the villains from claymore yeah that so one. that's a question if it's a claymore uh, which one that you would like to see next and whether you like, so it's like uh, my uh, Q&A now to our fans that I would love to hear an answer for whether they would like us to go for the villains uh, collection bust as well. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. Like villains, claymores, because we could even do, you know, like an Ophelia before she was awakened, which would be interesting. There's, yeah, there's a lot we can do. So... Let us know, because that's ultimately that's what helped us choose Claire versus Ophelia, the statue we're we're showing now. So yeah. we we do listen to what you're you're saying. Um, yeah. So please make sure to yeah. to be loud about it. Yeah, be loud. Keep any posts that we do. Just yeah. tell us what you want. <laughs> spam it. We'll make, yeah, spam it. <laughs> yeah. Um, excellent. Yeah, spam, but don't troll. Uh, <laughs> yeah spam no trolls please um yeah. so the next question is when will evangelion be coming i know we we announced that we had the license a while back so is is there a plan for that to be released are we working on it what's the uh when's it coming? Uh, well um it's an amazing piece by the way i'm very proud of it and it's done it's completely done there's like just a licensing for melodies going around that we are hoping to tackle very soon is it going to be on our 20, 20 25 plan maybe we just need to uh, get the final go ahead uh, from the licensors because everything else is completely ready and it's a masterpiece yeah it's it's an amazing piece definitely um yeah hopefully we can get it get it through um, our licensing formalities, and then we can potentially release it next year. Who knows? We're, we're hoping, always hoping. Um, so the next one is, when is, similar to Vampire Hunter D, kind of, I guess, when is the Castlevania statue going to be released? Yeah, uh, that's hopefully going to be uh, sometime uh, Q1 or Q2 next year. Uh, we will definitely give more uh, detailed updates and more accurate updates. Again, it's a very complicated piece that we have done. It's huge, so we wanted to give it its its time, I would say. But definitely, uh, it's in the work and uh, expect to be a, another masterpiece. As all of you guys have seen uh, yeah. with Naruto, Dororo, it was a long wait, but it's it, it's it's worth it. Just uh, be patient, uh, trust in our uh, 
timeline because we really want to give you something uh, great and beyond. We will never stop. We will keep going, yeah. uh, delivering to you our masterpieces. But uh, give us some time uh, when it's needed. Yeah, exactly. And I think this is one of the things that comes with with what we do is that we're always pushing the boundaries. And so we do we do run into challenges by doing that. We're having to create new techniques to, to cast certain things. Um, we're having to really do a lot of QC, like during the prototype stage to make sure that what we want is actually achievable. Um, so there are a lot of things that go into our statue that I think um, do make the manufacturing process more challenging than I think other pieces for sure. Um, Absolutely. So I totally agree. Yeah. So the next question is with the huge claim or fan base, are we already working on the third statue or are we looking at doing anything different like a solo line or anything like that? Yeah. The question is, which statue that you would like us to do. Now we have heard you with uh, Teresa versus Priscilla, uh, Claire versus Ophelia, which uh, statue you would like us to create. Uh, please let us know, guys. Be loud, be consistent, uh, create a pull, whatever, a mm. pull or whatever in uh, in the hub. And let us know, we would love to do uh, more claymores. It's a great success line for us, whether it's Elite Bust or yeah. Uh, the elite, uh, the yes, the elite exclusive. So uh, please, guys, don't be shy. Let us know your opinion. Yeah, definitely. And if you do want us to do, you know, a different line of it, so whether it's a solo, that's something we we could also look at doing as well. Um, so yeah, as as Shanab says, be loud, spam us with what you want, and and we'll make it happen. Yeah. The final question we've got today is, will the colour of Claire's clothes and armour be exactly the same as Teresa and the same for her, uh, for her hair as well? Yeah, definitely. Definitely it will be the same. Um, it's a continuation of the first line, so there's no reason why it should not be the same. Uh, and uh, Claire's hair, face, it's in adjustment. It will just get better here today before I come to the live. I have seen the update. It's great. I love it. And I hope the fans will love it too. Don't worry, guys. We will keep enhancing the piece till it will reach that perfection. Yeah, exactly. And it's we're always going to make sure that it does have that continuation from the previous pieces as well. So that you don't need to worry too, too much around the, the coloring. Or the textures even like yeah. the textures the same as well so, absolutely uh, yeah so you can put them next to each other and they'll look great so that is it for us today um just a reminder for everyone to be there 26th of october 11 p.m japan time there are going to be a maximum of 800 pieces which for teresa versus priscilla that went in an hour and 40 so make sure you're there on time um and we're, we're looking and if you to... miss it you will like uh, pay double the price <laughs> yeah. this is your call yeah yeah miss it and you'll be and uh... you will not have the privilege of the day one uh, discounts and all of that right exactly um so yeah there's a lot of reasons to be there on time on the day to actually make sure you get this statue get the discounts um get our store exclusives so yeah this is that's just your, your friendly reminder to be there. And it's been great talking to you, Shinab, around this statue. And I think we've um, Thanks, some really interesting As things. As always, you run the conversation in a great way. Thank you so much. And thank you for our fans who came uh, to like watch us today, who gave us the questions. And uh, we are the collectors, and we are more than happy to always be there for you. Uh, you know, like our goal is to keep going with this hobby to its limits and yeah. uh, we will never uh, stop uh, spreading our art around the world. We are here for the passion of it. Yes. And that's what 
everyone can see and that's a great uh, side of our success to have this huge loyal fan base of figaro because that we will never let down yeah yeah exactly it's uh yeah it's been amazing talking to you and amazing uh amazing for all of you figaroians uh being here so uh keep on collecting exactly we are the collectors we are the collectors there it is figgy yeah i'm, yeah. I'm very sad i don't have that t-shirt actually makes me sad you should request one yeah i need to get one i need to get one <laughs> we we can give it to you except you know um in in like a return of the bonus so we can retain <laughs> your bonus and you you can get uh <laughs> i see <laughs> yeah yeah awesome. <laughs> amazing thank you thank you so much Stephen. bye guys bye all the best